we're going to start now our first panel, um, and we have uh, two exceptional speakers here to discuss the investment landscape in Ethiopia. We want to hear the investors' perspective on the different business opportunities that exist in Ethiopia. Um, we have today with us here the Honorable Dr. Awintu Halo, who is the Senior Advisor to the Commissioner of the EIC, the Ethiopian Investment Commission. Okay. And our second speaker, Mr. Alexander B. Endeshaw, who is direct, Director of Investment Banking at Renaissance Capital in Addis Ababa. Um, he is also a, a graduate from Princeton and uh, MBA from Duke. And uh, um, we've chatted uh, um, earlier last week and really excited to hear about all the different uh, business opportunities and investments that exist in Ethiopia. Um, and so without further ado, let's start with uh, Dr. Ewintu Halo. Um, who has a short presentation to show us um, the interesting business opportunities and investment opportunities in Ethiopia. Um, and then we'll move on to the questions. So please, Dr. Wintu. I'm going to present on the behalf of my commissioner, Commissioner Her Excellency Commissioner Delise. And uh, the, I'm going to just present in, in a few uh, minutes about uh, opportunities uh, and potentials Ethiopia has for foreign investors for FDI. Uh, the basic uh, the basic is um, Ethiopia has a history of very fastest growing economy in Africa and uh, if you look we look at it the uh, increase in FDI between 2013 to 80 is uh, fourfold uh, in, in the recent past and most of the FDI inflow is attributed to the light manufacturing uh, industries so uh, according to last year data, we stand fields in attracting foreign invest, uh, investment. Uh, because of this, we attracted a lot of uh, big brands, anchor brands from the world. But our concern nowadays is our, how to sustain this, uh, th this momentum uh, in economic development. So the government is have uh, undertaking the, the economic reform in two and three main uh, target areas. For instance, economic and investment reforms, and creating conducive and uh, enabling environment for investment, and targeting invest investment uh, priority areas. On, when we do this one, the reform is classifying the whole system into three at micro level, at macro level, at the structural level, and at sectoral level. At macro level, the reform focuses on correcting the forex imbalances. Uh, control inflation and uh, improving access to finance and so on. At structural level, the reform focuses on ease of doing business and uh, ease of uh, uh, business constraints in, in, in different uh, structural reforms. The, at sectoral level, uh, level, the reform focuses addressing sectoral specific issues and market failures. By doing this one, we have, the government is focusing to build the confidence and rebalance growth and uh, enhance pro, uh, productivity in the country. The final ultimate goal of this reform is to create more jobs uh, and inclusive growth, uh, poverty reduction and creating path to poverty, uh, prosperity. So the focus is how to sustain the success of the past, addressing emerging challenges and create new opportunities for private investors are the main issue uh, we are working on. Opening up some areas, more economy to uh, underway through key microeconomic and the trade and the regional integration reforms are in, in four areas. At macro level, at trade and the regional integration, at uh, regulatory reforms and investment climates. I will, I will say some few points on uh, investment climates later on. At macro level, the government is focusing on strengthening, uh, strengthening the public sector finances, correcting the forexes, controlling inflation, and the like. At the trade and the regional inf uh, integration, Africa uh, continent free trade areas are one of the focus. Uh, in doing this, aim to create a kind of single continental wide market to unlock market access to potential 1.2 billion people in, in Africa. Second point was uh, to to world, world uh, trade organization. Uh, this reinitiating the negotiation access to WHTO, WTO, uh, and the key points of uh, bilateral marketing and so on. Regarding the regulatory reforms, 
uh, we uh, have a new legislation and a new proclamation of the investment proclamation. The, the main reason to do this is to modernize the investment regulatory and administrative framework to align the investment legal regimes with recent changes in economic policy priorities, revisit investment areas open to private sector, where, where, where was uh, where the uh, starting point of the reason to uh, reform. Uh, one of the uh, main change in our uh, regulatory issue is a kind of, you know, one can take that as a paradigm shift from positive listing to negative listing in our proclamation. Earlier, we have a list of uh, areas that anyone from the world, around the world can be involved in or taking part. These days, we completely change it to negative listing. We have some areas, about 32 specific areas, reserved for domestic uh, investors. Others are uh, open for JV with government, JV with and domestic investors, and up to solutely for domestic investors, three areas. For instance, areas reserved for joint venture with government like manufacturing of weapons, ammunition, explosives, and uh, the like. Export and import of electrical energy, exclusively it was government exclusive, but nowadays JV, joint venture. International air, air transport, it was absolutely for government. Now it is possible to joint venture. Postal services, with the exception of carrier, was government exclusive. Nowadays it is possible to be a joint venture. Areas reserved for domestic investors are about 32 lists, but I will, I will mention about three or five of them only. For instance, financial services, excluding capital goods finance business are only reserved for uh, domestic. Primary and the middle level health services, uh, wholesale trades excluding the wholesale of electronic, electric, electronic commerces are reserved for domestic. Uh, retail trades excluding electronic commerce are reserved as well for domestic. Import trade excluding liquidified petroleum gas and uh, Bitumen is uh, reserved as well. And other private employment agency services, excluding such as services for employment, uh, and others are also reserved for domestic. Others, all else, are open for uh, foreign direct investment. JV with domestic investors, for instance, uh, freight forwarding and shipping agency services was only for Ethiopians, but nowadays it is joint venture with Ethiopians. Domestic air transport, possible for, for uh, joint venture. Cross-country public transport with uh, buses with seat capacity of about 45 passengers, it's possible with uh, joint venture these days. Urban mass transport with large car carrying capacity is possible again. Advertisement and promotion services, possible. And other uh, audiovisual services, are possible with joint venture with domestic investors, which were completely reserved for Ethiopians earlier. One of the most important uh, uh, to be asked here is capital requirement on foreign investors is, the minimum capital required for foreign investors is 200,000 USD. For joint venture with uh, domestic investors is about 100, uh, 150,000 USD these days. This area in the area of architecture, engineering works related to technical consultancy, if it is joint venture, it is 100,000 USD. Uh, if it is uh, absolute, it is 100,000. If it is joint venture, it is 50,000 USD only. So the other issue that we have a problem is on doing e uh, business easily. In Ethiopia, we have a lot of bottlenecks but uh, about 80 reforms are undertaken. We identified a bottlenecks about 80 sub, uh, sectoral problems, and now they are already undertaken. The reform is already undertaken. Now, ease of business doing is uh, one of the top areas that we are working on. Ethiopia has a great potential um, for investment, for FDI on agriculture, manufacturing, mining, 
ICT and tourism. What are the priority areas? Textile and apparel, laser, laser products, pharmaceuticals, agro processing, tourism, ICT and mining are uh, priority areas that we put together these days. One of the main question everybody is interested is why we do business in Ethiopia. We have a lot of reasons. I thank you for the video we already have got earlier. Uh, it is really very good video that uh, answers a lot of my, my, my worries. One of the main reasons that one can uh, should work business with Ethiopia is one is growing and dynamic economy with active labor forces in Ethiopia, which is about 50% is young and abundant natural resources and the geographical advantage is one of the reasons one can have to work business with Ethiopia in Ethiopia. The second one is conducive and enabling environment. That means strong, effective, strong and effective government support, tailored incentive, specialized industrial parks and expanding infrastructure are very attractive in Ethiopia right now. The third main point I want to emphasize is uh, the Ethiopian Investment Board is chaired by uh, His Excellency Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, our Prime Minister. This shows that how uh, investment in the FDI is the center to our economy. So uh, a lot of ministers and very relevant uh, ministries and the commissions are uh, member of the board, but chaired by His Excellency Prime Minister. This shows that how much the government is focusing on attracting investors. With regard to in, uh, incentives and support, we have uh, non-physical incentives, physical incentives, and other incentives as well. From uh, non-physical incentives, for instance, guarantee against the expropriation, guarantee for repatriation of funds, and custom facilitation and through uh, bonded export factory, export factory and similar other uh, schemes. Physical income tax exemption, custom tax exemption, loss carry for work and full export duty exemptions are uh, very, very uh, supportive incentives we, we have. Others like uh, one-stop service, one-stop shop service, and uh, expanded procedures for securing visa and so on. These are incentives we have for FDI. Another main reason that uh, one have to work in a business in Ethiopia is we have the largest uh, air transport, largest and uh, very conducive large, uh, air transport with uh, more than 98 international destinations. The other is uh, we have uh, all weather roads in national wide uh, connected. The other very attractive uh, uh, infrastructure is uh, Africa's electric powered railways from Djibouti to Mojo Dry Port about seven kilometers and they're very, very conducive these days. Uh, I, uh, the other one is green electric generation with low cost in, in Africa. And we have electricity, hydropower and electricity. These are very, very attractive. And uh, shortly I have to stop here and uh, thank you very much. And you are all welcome to invest in Ethiopia and do business in Ethiopia. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Winto. Um, so uh, I want to move on to our next speaker, and then uh, we can start with the questions, and I would address the first question um, uh, to Alexander. Um, unless, Alexander, of course, if you'd like to start uh, you know, um, with a certain statement or any words, feel free to do so. Um, before we move on, I want to say uh, uh, just one important thing. As you can see in this event, there's the virtual networking um, aspect to it, right? The tables and the chairs that you can sit and meet people. So um, after this presentation, you can at any point in time, go to the lounge, which is on the right side of your screen um, and, 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 and sit at the lounge so that you can continue your networking there if you would not want to be uh, disturbed by the next panel that we have later, which is a fantastic panel about agriculture and the different business opportunities there. But again, just so people know and understand that there's a, a, an ability to do that as well as we mentioned in the announcements, okay? So now moving on to our next uh, speaker and guest here. Mr. Alexander Endeshaw, Director of Investment Banking at Renaissance Capital in Addis. Um, Alex, would you like to start with uh, some remarks or should I dive straight into the questions that we have? I mean, I guess a question that a lot of people ask, you know, 
especially people from the um, 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 from from the West, so-called, or from Europe, people who aren't necessarily familiar with Ethiopia, with the African continent. Um, why Ethiopia? Why is Alexander, with all your personal experience that you have thus far, um, which is extremely impressive, why invest in Ethiopia? From the perspective of uh, of investing in Africa and investing, um, I guess you could say responsibly or, or carefully, you want to be investing in the people, be investing in what the people and perspective of uh, private equity uh, out of London and New York, uh, the great interest uh, in order to, to do those things I just mentioned is to invest in fast moving consumer goods, uh, products and services that are really And why invest in Ethiopia? You're getting a chance to invest a captive population of 115 million people uh, that have enormous demand for, um, for fast moving consumer goods, for food, for uh, clothes, for um, any, anything that's really, you know, you know, that you could actually find in the supermarket uh, or in uh, the drugstores or in any of the, or, you know, to put a, you know, you can, uh, you want to find, buy it over, over at Walmart or something like that. That's really the great end. How that opportunity presents itself is the fact that Ethiopia still imports a great deal of these kinds of fast moving consumer goods. And uh, the, the cost to import is still tremendously high. For investors that uh, want to invest in uh, uh, light textiles and leather, for example, or pharmaceuticals uh, and agriculture, uh, as uh, Dr. Winatu mentioned, uh, to be able to invest here, uh, making a joint venture uh, to build a, to put up a factory, or even to essentially support an existing uh, factory to import substitute uh, those products. Uh, those are doable win in my and the uh, uh you experience news by investing directly into whether you want to do it directly as a uh, by building your own factory or working with people and investing in people who already have their own factories i i think that is still something a very opportunity uh, for invest or London, uh, and it's all that the country uh, very much wants and needs. Uh, the public and the private very supportive of that, and also supportive of that. It's it's uh, I think a really good example of that is the growth of the dairy industry. And I've been in Ethiopia for more than eight years, and when I came here the dairy sector was non-existent. You would go to the supermarket and find uh, all these dated imports for milk and cheese and butter from Europe uh, or from China or wherever. Uh, today, we have this tremendously burgeoning uh, dairy sector that makes quality milk, uh, quality yogurt, quality cheese, uh, even now uh, more um, uh, higher end uh, dairy products such as uh, Greek yogurt, even cream cheese is now available. Uh, growth has been tremendous and the people behind it have done a tremendous job. So uh, and, uh, if you go to the supermarket, that stuff is gone <laughs> within days, uh, sometimes even less than a day. So I, I still recommend that as a... Um, right very, very attractive in Ethiopia. Wonderful, wonderful, thanks. 
Um, can you share maybe from your personal experience um, a specific success story that you were involved in or that you think would be relevant to share with the audience, with all of us? Uh, you know, this is uh, something that a client uh, was working on. They uh, uh, had an agreement uh, that needed to be uh, uh, collaborated on with the government. And uh, many uh, uh, months uh, went back and forth between the client and the government with respect to this agreement. And uh, essentially, uh, what really made it successful was understanding that the government uh, needed to work with a uh, intermediary that could answer all of the questions that the government had about the agreement. Uh, and we found a, uh, a very, very good intermediary that was able to, a lawyer who was able to, to do this. And the process, uh, you know, after many months uh, became very, very, my recommendation for that is that uh, the, the legal community in Ethiopia uh, for uh, your joint ventures or efforts that are directly working with the government or also working with the private sector. Uh, that happen, working with a local uh, Ethiopian lawyer is, is very, very helpful because right. it promotes, it helps, uh, it helps uh, speed up understanding. And uh, the collaboration for the agreement uh, went forward and it certainly had to do with the fact that uh, a strong, good local intermediary was found to do that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's true also in, in many other, you know, uh, countries as well that we're seeing that the, the, um, the accountants, the lawyers, you know, is really, is really um, have such a, such a critical role here that can help uh, uh, doing that. And on that note, I'd also just uh, to everyone here who's with us listening, um, uh, our team at Empower Africa um, are happy to assist with, uh, with, with these connections to the different experts in the different countries, to the relevant lawyers and accountants and so on, to help uh, move forward different investments and uh, uh, different uh, business opportunities. Um, I think another question I, I wanted to ask, and this is also, I'm happy to hear also um, uh, what uh, Dr. Wintu uh, maybe, uh, you know, would think about this, but um, if we would address, you know, for you as an investor, Right. What would you say the main challenge is? Right. Because we're all, you know, uh, walking around uh, the face of the earth and uh, doing business and doing business is challenging always. And each uh, uh, landscape and uh, uh, country and ecosystem has its own challenges. What would you say the main challenge um, that you've experienced thus far in, uh, um, in you know, in investing in Ethiopia? Uh. I would say uh, it, it's difficult to be patient. It's difficult to be, to be patient uh, on right. both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, investors uh, out of uh, the Western markets in London, they usually have a range of years, two to five years to make an investment and to return money to investors they uh, it's difficult for them to be patient because uh, the, the the speed of commerce is just uh, it, it's i wouldn't say it's slower it, it, it just moves at a different pace in a, right. in a country like ethiopia and certainly all over africa and what we found is that um you know now as opposed to say for example five six years ago Investors are certainly accepting the fact that having uh, very uh, short uh, time windows of three to five years uh, is, is uh, less and less uh, reasonable uh, when it comes to investment. And then uh, on the other side, 
it's, it's also difficult for when you're say collaborating with the government or you're working with uh, uh, <laughs> from time to time cool issues uh, that even very adept and uh, super competent us, uh, Western investors cannot get done, you know, within days uh, or weeks. They, right. they, they need months. And so, uh, so part of uh, as uh, what I've been doing besides to, to be patient and, um, and just, uh, just collaborate according to the constraints and recognize that uh, that that speed is not something that can always be exactly the way you want it. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's uh, that definitely sounds accurate. Um, so before we end, unfortunately, our time is uh, almost up. Um, but uh, I'm very happy we had this opportunity to connect. And um, this is just the beginning. Like we mentioned, we're going to be uh, hosting more of these events. Um, in general, we're always having our virtual networking events in Empower Africa. We're having, uh, you know, uh, more than two a month. Uh, at the minimum, we're having two a month, and we're going to uh, facilitate more of these so we can help connect the relevant uh, stakeholders who want to do business in different countries in Africa. Specifically now, um, this event is highlighted, hi highlighted in Ethiopia, as we all know. And uh, we do believe that Ethiopia, you know, just the nature of things, and if you look at the stats and the numbers, is really one of the leading countries that any investor in any business around the world should be looking at. Um, and so just to wrap up this session, um, and I'd love to also have, uh, are, you, are you still with us, Dr. Owintu? I'd love to point this question uh, uh, for you as well uh, uh, to answer. Um, do you have any tips? Are there, are there tips for, for new investors um, that you could potentially give? And again, I'd, I'd love to hear, let, let's hear Dr. Wintu maybe first, and then Alex, please. Your question again, please. Um, the question is, um, as we wrap up the session, um, and we all, you know, are discovering just the tremendous potential that Ethiopia has and why it is such an attractive country and ecosystem for investors to come and for international businesses to come, um, do you have any tips, right? Let's say you had, you know, one or two tips to give to an investor from the US, from Europe, um, to come and invest in Ethiopia? What, what would be your tip, Dr. Winter? <clears throat> okay, the, the, the main tip is um, our readiness to accept and to receive and to work with you. We are by far better than yesterday. We are not where we were yesterday. Now, the most important tip for us and everybody is waiting for you. We are we are we are here to support and to welcome you all. That's the main thing. Second one is we have abundant uh, natural resources untapped, and the policy is completely uh, improved and reformed. And we are trying to make the most and the maximum capacity to make uh, investment for, for FDI um, success. So. We, when we attract, when we ask to come here, we are ready to support to, uh, for your success because investor success is our success. The, the most important tip for me is our readiness. The policy is ready, government is ready, as an institution, as a corpor uh, corporation, uh, as a commission, we are from the commissioner to my level, we are ready to welcome you. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Alex, what would be your tip? I would say that uh, tips would be to certainly uh, reach out to uh, someone like myself or, um, or even the, the uh, local uh, investors in Ethiopia, some of the local private, private equity companies. Many of these companies have existing businesses, great experience in the local market, and it's, uh, it, it might be a way to be able to connect to investors that have existing businesses and you can get started rather. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wintu. And um, before we wrap up the session, again, I welcome anyone to uh, reach out to any of the Empower Africa uh, um, uh, uh, staff here 
to uh, discuss with us further any other you know specific interests that you may have in uh, different projects in Ethiopia. Um, more than happy to connect you guys to the relevant people who are speaking here as well. Alex, I know you felt uh, slightly uncomfortable potentially for plugging yourself in, but we're more than happy to do that and to connect you with anybody who is interested um, in looking into different investments uh, in Ethiopia. So thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Dr. Mertu. And uh, we appreciate your insights. Welcome. And uh, Welcome. like we said, this is, this is, this is just the beginning um, of uh, multiple different events and collaborations that uh, we're going to do together with Empower Africa, uh, specifically in Ethiopia. And uh, we look forward to staying in touch and uh, exploring different business opportunities together. Okay? Thank you, Shai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Stay safe and healthy.